Hi everyone. Let's talk some basics of chemistry. Let's discuss physical quantities and their SI units. Now, in scientific studies, we deal with length, we deal with mass, we deal with volume, temperature, concentration, pressure, force, work, and density. So these are some of the quantities that we deal with in our scientific studies. And all such quantities which we deal with in the scientific studies are known as physical quantities. These are only some of the physical quantities that we have mentioned here. There are many physical quantities that we deal with in our scientific studies and those are all physical quantities. Now, any physical quantity can be represented using a number and a unit. Let's say that if we talk about length, then we can say that the length is 1 meter, right? Or we can say that it is 12 inches. 12 inches means 12 1 foot, right? So we are actually talking about the length of a line or, or any object or anything. And here we have represented that length using a number and a unit. 1 meter, meter is a unit, 12 inches, 12 is the number and inches is another unit and 1 foot, 1 is the number and foot is another unit to measure the length. Now, we use SI unit and that is what we'll discuss real quick here because in detail we'll be discussing SI unit in our next video lecture. But we have to discuss the basics of uh, SI unit that why do we why we need SI unit so here we have seven basic physical quantities these are seven basic physical quantities and let me uh, name them that is length mass time electric current amount of a substance thermodynamic temperature luminous intensity now luminous intensity deals with uh, the light okay why are these physical quantities called basic physical quantities that is the first question that should arise now these are called basic physical quantities because rest all the other uh, physical quantities their si units are derived using the si units of these physical quantities. These are the symbols of these respective physical quantities. For example, this lowercase l is the symbol for length, this m is for mass, t for time, i for electric current, that is uppercase, okay. Then lowercase n is amount of a substance, then capital T and then i and this is called nu. This is called nu, okay. So i nu is for luminous intensity. Now, when we measure, when we measure length, mass, time, electric current, amount of substance, thermodynamic temperature, luminous intensity, these physical quantities, they have their SI unit already established. That is, when we take the SI unit of length, that is in meter, for mass, it's kilogram, for time, it's second, for electric current, it's ampere, for amount of a substance is mole, the thermodynamic temperature is represented using SI unit that is Kelvin and candela is for luminous intensity and these are the symbols for these SI units. These are the symbols for these physical quantities and these are the symbols for these SI units. Lowercase m, then kg, then s, that's small s for second, then cap uppercase a, that is ampere, then uppercase k, for, sorry, for, sorry, this is mole should be here, I'm sorry. This mole should be here and this Kelvin should be K should be here and this candela CD is for this one. Now the reason that we call these as a basic physical quantities because these SI units are actually called basic S basic units. These are called basic units. And using these basic units, that is the SI units of these seven physical quantities, we derive the SI units 
of rest all the other physical quantities that we study in our scientific studies right and that's why they are called derived units they are called derived units we'll be discussing this derived units and more about si units in our next video lecture so derived units are the si units of this all the other physical quantities other than this these physical quantities and these are derived because these are derived from these si units and we'll be discussing it in detail don't worry so derived units these are the basic units and now let's try to understand what was the need to you know uh, establish the si unit si unit is called international system of units and in short it is si unit what was the need let's discuss that so imagine imagine that we have 37 miles and we have to convert this 37 miles if we had to convert this 37 miles in into inches so one mile is equal to 1760 yards one yard is equal to three feet and one foot is equal to 12 inches so from miles up to inches if you have to travel this path so one mile is equal to 1760 yards so 37 multiplied by 1760 now one yard is equal to three feet so if you have to convert this yard into foot this is this number multiplied by three so you get in foot but again you have to find into inches so one foot is equal to 12 inches therefore this many feet is equal to this many inches right so finally you'll get the number now imagine here sorry so here we actually took mile yards feet and inches so these were the units now imagine a case where we have to calculate this 37 kilometer and you have to convert it into millimeter now look very carefully one kilometer is equal to 100 meter that's 10 raised to the power of 2 meter one meter is equal to 100 centimeter that is 10 raised to the power of 2 centimeter one centimeter is equal to 10 millimeter that is 10 raised to the power of 1 millimeter kilometer meter centimeter millimeter these all units are actually multiples of power of 10 this is one power of 10 this is another this is another so these are related to each other in the terms of multiples of powers of 10 right so if you have to convert this 37 kilometer into millimeter look how easy it is to you know convert it from kilometer to milli into millimeter 37 kilometer into meter is 37 multiplied by 10 raised to the power of 2 meter then when you have to convert this meter into centimeter this is this number and multiplied by 10 raised to the power of 2 centimeter now this centimeter this number ha has to be converted into millimeter so this number multiplied by 10 millimeter and finally you will get the number 37 multiplied by 10 raised to the power of 5 millimeter compare it with this calculation and the final number that we get here and this calculation the final number that we get here right compare which one is easier of course if you compare these two this one was easy to calculate and that's what forced you know scientists to consider this particular system and they named it they named it metric system they named it matrix system okay let's do here so they named it matrix system and why matrix system because here as you can see here units are related to each other in terms of multiples of powers of 10 one kilometer is equal to 10 raised to the power of 2 meter one meter is equal to 10 raised to the power of 2 centimeter and 1 centimeter is equal to 10 raised to the power of 1 millimeter so on and so forth that's what called metric system therefore french academy of science in 1791 used this you know uh, benefit of using these this uh, system and they named it as metric system and it was so popular that it was accepted by 
the scientific community in the entire world. But again, there were some uh, you know further changes made into it, and it was called the International System of Units, or in short, SI units, and it was named uh, in 1960 in France by General Conference of Weights and Measures, that is CGPM. They give this international system of units or in short SI units. It's basically based on matrix system only, where we have, again, same. It's completely dependent upon, sorry, these seven physical quantities these seven physical quantities and their basic SI units. In these SI units, we calculate uh, the SI units of other physical quantities and they, they that's why they are called derived units. In our next video lecture, we'll be discussing more about SI units and derived units. So see you in the next video lecture.